All right. This is another test because apparently I'm a Muppet when it comes to setting shit up. And I can't seem to get... Or maybe it's just this camera. Maybe the GoPro is just better at recording and stuff and video quality. And it probably is. My problem with the GoPro is it is reliable. It's a dog turd. So, I've got an ND8 at 4K60. And I'm just using uh, automatic settings. We'll see what it can do here. See if it can make it decent. I'm hoping it can. My biggest concern is the motion blur. So we'll see if it can do that. sounded pretty good but then you pick up a lot more road noise and exhaust noise made the exhaust in the cabin really freaking loud which sometimes you don't mind but sometimes it was a bit much <clears throat> so I went ahead and uh, spent about 1100 bucks for the new amp and the new uh, box to get that put in the trunk play it for you, but there's no way the the, the microphone on, on this camera is going to do it justice. Plus, if I have music playing, then YouTube will take away my monetization for a copyright infringement. So this music is owned by Katy Perry or whatever. But now I can have the back seats up. So the back seat looks normal, you know, I got seats back there. And the bass is about twice as loud as the old system was with them open. And now even though I've got my track, my exhaust in track mode, it's really loud, or it's, it's not as loud anymore in the cabin, which is kind of cool. It's loud when you want it to be, but then when I put it in quiet, it's even quieter. Now it sounds like I'm in a Camry. And I'm not picking up as much road noise because the cabin's well insulated for sound, but the trunk wasn't. So having the back seats forward kind of was monkey in with that. So yeah, so let's give this a test. It's a little brighter, but not sunny. And I'm not gonna see a sunny day for, I, I don't even know how long the, the forecast is just nothing but rain. I think next Friday I am off. 
and it's going to be partly sunny but high in the 40s so i still won't be able to ride but maybe we'll go up to the mount maybe we'll go up and do blood mountain or something in the car but yeah these tires grip so much better than the pirellis so jimmy and i were in here before went over to old town cutlery and just kind of tooling around killing time and uh we got a zero to 60 at four, a 4.6. So all the brochures and magazines and everything say it's four and a half seconds. So with two people in the car, including my 250 pound person with clothes, um, we were still able to get a 4.6, so not bad. The old Pirellis would have been sitting there spinning. So these, um, these tires are hooking up pretty well. Um, it's not even that hot out. It's only in the 50s today. But these are the DWS 06, so the Extreme Contact Plus. And a 265-35 front and a 285-35 rear on uh, 19 inch rims. Running 37 PSI front and back cold. Um, I got tire, uh, discount tire, their new pit stop location where you just pull in and it's like NASCAR. You sit in the car and they jack it up and I got one guy in each wheel and you're in and out of there in like 15 minutes. It's awesome. Um, you just buy the tires online, pay for everything and you pull up and they're like, boom, bay number three. And it's like, you know, it's like a NASCAR experience kind of thing. That's what they're going for. A bunch of guys descend on your car and there's literally one guy on each wheel and they just come in and knock it out. Um, and they put them at 35 front, 39 rear. And the downside to that was, it didn't, you know, the door sill says 32, but that's for freaking, um, like run flats. That's what the car came with. So the pressure you would run for run flats, I don't think is going to be optimal. You know, run flats have a completely different carcass stiffness, obviously, because you can run them flat for 50 miles. So the tire the pressure that was needed there. So 35 front, the front felt just a little vague. It felt a little squishy in the turns. So what I did was I dropped two pounds from the back and added two to the front, just put them at 37, 37. And so far, it feels great. I mean, stomping on the on the, the brakes, um, you know, with the traction control, I'm putting track mode and I tried drag mode. So I was in track, yeah, both both of those. Traction keep, track mode keeps traction control off. Drag mode puts it on to an extent. And I stomp on the brakes and rev it up to 3,000 RPMs. And then just drop it and floor it. And it would, um, it just took off. It just dug it and went. There was really no, no spinning or no drama. Even with the traction control off, it was awesome. It feels a little more planted. It doesn't feel like the tire's moving as much. Yeah, even they're wide open through the turn. I mean, no squirreliness, nothing in the back. These tires are great. They're not gonna be as good as like your Michelin summer tires, but those tires suck in the winter time when it's 40 degrees and wet and cold and stuff you got no grip they're hard as a rock so this was a good uh, compromise definitely a big step up from the run flats but still good in the cold weather so. good so there's some pot that's why I'm taking this road here because we have some twisties and some potholes and I want to see how uh, the stability of the uh, image stabilization on the camera does 
So playing with the ND filter so I could get the motion blur, you know, my videos looked good before. They just lacked that realism. They had what you, people call the soap opera effect. You know, 60 frames per second, there's no motion blur. It's crystal clear, but it doesn't look natural. In real life, there is motion blur. Things in your peripheral, things moving quickly, you see them as a blur. Um, and you weren't seeing that in my videos. So I've got the ND filters, and I've seen some amazing videos online with ND filters, but most of them have been with, been with GoPros, and the ones that I've seen that with the Insta360 looked phenomenal, and I've even used that person's settings, and I just can't get it to look right. Um, the clarity looks good, but the Insta360 has a real problem with Im image stabilization when you're using a slow shutter speed. When you introduce blur into the video, hey little dog, there's um, it's like it when it's crystal clear, the pixels in the image is well defined. It knows what's what, where the boundaries are, and all that kind of stuff. And it does a much better job of image stabilization. When you got the motion blur, it doesn't have that sharp detail to be able to do that as well. And I've played with everything. I've tried doing it in post, tried doing it in film. I bought the version of uh, Filmora, Wondershare Filmora, which is a good video editing app. That image stabilization didn't do it. Using the one from Insta360, doing it in post, did it okay, but there was kind of glitchy. So this is like my last ditch attempt to get this to work. And if it doesn't, well, it is what it is. I'm not gonna go buy a GoPro just to get that because I'm, just, I'm not giving them any more money. I've gone through too much drama with those idiots. Their, their cameras are phenomenal when they work. The problem is when they work. And my friends that have got older ones up to the 8, they're fine. It's the damn 9 and the 10 and now the 11. So if the 11's out for a year and has no issues, yeah, maybe I'll give it a look. But I'm tired of spending four hundred, four or five hundred dollars on a freaking camera, and then it overheats while going down the road, getting blasted by wind. And then when you call them and you're like, "Hey, this thing's broken. It, it's overheating left and right. Is it in? You know, is it, is it? Are you sitting stationary in your garage? No, it's mounted to the handlebar of a motorcycle going 100 miles an hour. Cooling should not be a problem. It's getting blasted by the wind." Well, the only way to keep our things from moving, oh, if it's overheating, is you gotta go down to 30 frames a second. It's like, why'd I buy a 120 frame camera if I can't? And they're like, well, it doesn't, this is what the customer service person told me. They're like, well, yeah, you can use those frame rates, but that's typically like when people are skiing, snowboarding, swimming, kayak, you know, they're in water, you know, so it, that, that cold temperature of the water is cooling the camera. I'm like, so under normal circumstances, I can't use higher than 30? And she's like, yeah. She's like, the camera's not broken. That's just how it works. I was like, okay. I need to speak to your supervisor and ask the same question and got the same answer. So I made a video of me shooting the GoPro and I won't buy from them anymore, which is a shame because I, I'm going for the Insta360, which is not as good. It's good. So my videos look okay. But they're la they're lacking that real, just that extra pop and image clarity that you know GoPro's known for. But I don't care how good it shoots if I know 50% of the time I'm going to get to the end of the la you know I'm doing my uh, a really fast mountain run or I'm doing something else for the channel or I'm at a track day and I get to the end and there's no footage. It's like, well, what good is that? So. So I put it in, uh, put an ND8 on it, and just to see if auto will try to slow down the shutter speed a little bit and get me a little bit of motion blur, but not too much that I can't get um, image stabilization. And if I have to drop to an ND4, I've got one of those. Uh, but the manual settings, that's the problem. The more, if you get, by the time I'm getting the motion blur I want, then I'm, I'm not getting image stabilization. Chowderhead. So anyway, I'm gonna go get a couple ribeyes 
for dinner later and uh, we'll see how this all works so I guess I could shut this off because this is not really interesting sitting in a parking lot but anyway later